Hi, APUSH students. I've be begun reading your SAQs, um, your first two SAQs, one the Dueling Historians one and the one on the Columbian Exchange. And I have some thoughts about some things that are not going right. So I've titled this short little mini presentation, How to Answer an SAQ Wrong. So please pay careful attention because you may spot why I couldn't give you credit for some of your responses. So the first thing you can do that's wrong is just be vague. Instead of getting to the point and using specific words, just keep it general. That way, it's so general, it's not even offensive. For example, this is not anyone's uh, SAQ in particular, uh, but just kind of a conglomeration of all the vague ones. The first author says that the Columbian Exchange affected people in the region by changing the ways they lived in a very big way. The exchange had a big impact in the second source as well. Both sources show the Columbian Exchange altered the lives of the people. Great. Vague, not offensive. So what's so wrong with that? Well, imagine that you went up to a friend of yours and you ask her how she's doing, and she just says, I've got some things going on. And then that's it. Do you know exactly how she's doing? Do you know what things they are? Do you have any idea of what you can do to help or be supportive? Not really. You just know that there's some things going on. There's not enough information there for you to really know how to act. Or if you came home and asked your parent who's cooking dinner, hey, what's for dinner? And the response was food. Would that help you know how to prep for dinner or if you wanted it or if you were going to pretend to be sick that evening? There's not enough information there. If your responses are vague, they don't tell the reader anything. Instead, you want to be specific, not pacific, as my niece says, specific. So don't make your reader guess what you are thinking. And I see a typo there. Ah, see if you can spot it too. Um, don't make your reader guess what's going on in your head. You need to spell out exactly for the reader what you see happening in the source or in the SAQ um, in the test. Um, if I take the example from the first page and break it down, here are the problems I have with it. The first author, well, who is that author? Name them. And you could just go ahead and use dull at all or Denovan et al. or whoever the name of the author is, says that the Columbian Exchange affected people. What people? I mean, the writer of the paper didn't go, the Columbian Exchange affected people. Done. That's it. Um, they tell who's affected. In the region. Where? What region? Because it might matter if it's the Caribbean islands versus South America versus Canada. The new world's a big place. By changing the ways, what ways? We don't know what ways means, what ways they lived. Are we talking ways that they lived in terms of their government, in terms of their religion, in terms of their agriculture? They changed their ways in a very big way. How so? What is big? How much is big? I don't know what that quantity means. Um, that's a very, very vague uh, term in this situation here. The exchange had a big impact. Well, again, how big is big on the second source as well. Both sources show that the Columbian Exchange altered the lives of the people. How? This paragraph doesn't tell you anything at all. It is the APUSH equivalent to a parent telling you that food is for dinner. And if you write paragraphs like this in APUSH, I will be giving you a zero each time for them. The 
Second thing you can do to mess up your SAQ is, oh, that was a nice little rhyme there. The second thing you can do to mess up your, mess up your SAQ is to write a one sentence answer. Unless your sentence is long, it ain't going to get it. Both historians discuss the impact of agriculture changes on the native peoples of the Americas. There's not much to go on there. So you want to write a full response, and that's probably between 80 to 100 words. It should actually be a paragraph. For example, you could have written, both historians note that changes in the environment, and specifically plants in that environment, affected humans in the new world and vice versa. So that's a very opening general statement that the topic's about the environment and plants. Now I'm gonna get more specific here. Dull et al. show that the decline in native populations resulted in the intensity of the Little Ice Age as carbon decreased with the elimination of native peoples. So there was environmental change because native people died and those native people couldn't um, chop down forests um, or interact with the forest through forest burning in other ways. Richard shows that the introduction of a new crop sh changed native people's diets and created the impression of sugar being native to the new world. So he's arguing that native people adopt sugar um, and sugar gets to be assumed as like something that actually belongs in the new world as a result. So this is a fuller response than that one sentence, um, you know, mistake on the previous page. And a final way that you can mess up your SAQ is to focus on what the author says, or sorry, what the author does, not what the author says. For example, in the first source, the author is describing the effects of large-scale agriculture growth in the New World and explains how that growth affected Native peoples. It's not a terrible sentence, but my focus in that sentence is on what the author is doing rather than what the author actually concludes. So if we want to understand the Columbian exchange and understand what the exchange was about uh, with this tobacco sir for this fancy mystery jar, we need to know more about what the author is arguing and not just what they're doing in the passage. So give the author's conclusion what they're argument is, not a summary of what the author happens to be doing in that passage. Focus on, in other words, on what the author says, not what the author does. Dull et al. argue that the Columbian Exchange killed off native peoples through disease, that's the argument, which spurred reforestation and led to an intensification of the Little Ice Age. So instead of telling you that they focus on the environmental impact of the Little Ice Age as it relates to the Columbia Exchange. I'm now telling you what their argument about that is. So a strategy that you can use to make sure that you're doing this correctly is called ACE. Um, answer, cite, explain, and I'm going to tell you it will seem like overkill when you're doing the ACE strategy. You will go, wait a minute, I'm over explaining this, but no, you're not. You're being specific. You're being almost lawyer-like in your response. You kind of want to be that precise. So number one stands for answer, and you should start your, um, your SAQ with just a single sentence answer to the prompt. Um, it's not exactly like a thesis, but you're just giving a clear response to what the prompt is asking you to do. Two is cite, meaning give some information, some evidence, an author's actual argument. So tell me what the author says or give me a piece of evidence to prove the point that you're making. And three, this is where it's going to seem like overkill because you feel like you already did this. Explain how your evidence or the author's argument supports your answer to the prompt. So three is about linking one and two together. 
So there's a clear explanation of how this evidence backs up your answer. So I know this will seem like overkill and like, why am I doing this? But if you follow the strategy, it really will help. And that is how to mess up an SAQ, but also how to ace an SAQ.